The three Baltic states, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, are lined up along the Baltic coast. They used to be part of the Russian Empire. They gained their independence after World War I, lost it in 1940 when Stalin invaded them and incorporated them into the Soviet Union. In 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed, the Baltic states wanted to get out as fast as they possibly could. They, early on, established an interest in membership in the European Union, in NATO. They became members of both in 2004, and that left no doubt as to where they were positioned geopolitically, geoeconomically, uh, but it left some unresolved problems with Russia. One of the Soviet legacies in the life of the Baltic states is that they all have Russian minority populations. What were their citizenship rights? What were their language, education policies? What were employment policies? All of these were recurrent issues of friction between Russia and the Baltic states. After the Cold War, the United States wanted to have a good relationship with Russia, even as it took new allies into NATO. Russian policy throughout the 90s was to oppose the enlargement of NATO, but Russian foreign policy was mainly aimed at establishing a cooperative relationship with Europe and the United States. Increasingly, Putin questioned that. Perhaps the most important thing has been the nationalist ideology that he's generated. It came to full flower with the seizure of Crimea. This created a sense that Russia had resumed its place among the great powers. Since the Ukraine crisis of 2014, relations between Russia and the West have increasingly been like the Cold War a sense that gains by one side are losses to the other side. There's more of an ideological dimension now. The Putinist ideology gives an aggressive picture of what Russia intends. After the Ukraine crisis, all of the governments of NATO looked at the Baltics and they were concerned about further Russian pressure the exploitation of internal divisions in a neighboring country, the infiltration of little green men, covert operatives, the massing of forces on the border. The Baltic states are NATO members. An attack on one is an attack on all. When there's pressure against a NATO country, the North Atlantic Council meets and considers the nature of the threat there are, of course, differences of opinion as to what the right response is. Do you immediately pour military forces in, or do you think that's going to escalate the situation? Do you try diplomacy, or do you feel that that's a sign that you're hesitating? Do you take this issue to the UN? Do you establish a bilateral dialogue with Moscow, or do you think that's a sign that you're cutting your ally out of the process? Has the ally brought the problem on itself? In the case of a dispute between Russia and the Baltic states, there would be some saying, you know, let's try to cool this. There will be others saying, if you encourage the Russians at all with any sign that we're hesitating to defend our ally, they're only gonna put more pressure on. Some NATO allies will say, maybe we need to consider economic sanctions. Others will say, our commitments to each other are not ones that can be satisfied just by economic measures. In the Cold War, when people worried about nuclear confrontations, there was an extreme anxiety about escalation. There was also a sense that if you let the Russians intimidate you, your allies will not have confidence that you can defend them. That same set of anxieties and uncertainties would be present in any confrontation going forward that involves Russia and a NATO ally.